Well, welcome to this workshop on what we've called Municipalism for Dummies, <laughs> um, which is um, a bit of a joke, but at the same time not, because um, if, you'll, if you look at the program, you'll see that most of the workshops and the roundtables are very uh, practical on concrete issues. We haven't really got any big theoretical debates, and that's kind of part of what we like about municipalism. Um, sorry, I should introduce myself. I'm Kate from Barcelona in Comun. Um, I'm coordinating this workshop. Um, and it's the only workshop that is more theoretical or historical, let's say. Um, and the idea is whether you're participating in a, a municipalist project at the moment or not, to have some time to reflect on the theory of municipalism, the history of municipalism, but not as just an intellectual ec exercise, but actually to think about what opportunities the municipalist strategy provides and also its limits. Um, so to think about those issues, we've got with us today um, Ana Mendez, who is from Madrid, and she participated in the Ahorra Madrid candidacy that's now governing Madrid. We have Elisenda Aleman, um, who's from uh, Castilla, which is a small town in Catalonia, and it was one of the early municipalist experiences here in Catalonia, which um, began in, in 2008. And we have Beppe Caccia from Venice. Well, I don't know if that's where you live now, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he's also an, an old-timer in the municipalist uh, world, and he's been researching... Um, all of the different experiences around Europe with European alternatives. Um, so he's going to explain um, what's going on at the moment in, in municipalism. And um, then afterwards, we'll go into groups. And based on what we've heard the panelists talk about, we'll discuss what I was talking about before, which is the opportunities and the limits of uh, municipalism as a political strategy and then we'll come back and we'll have a, a bit of a debate and then we will um, go to the next session so I'll hand over to Anna who by the way has stepped in at the last minute for Laura who's not very well this morning so she's um, she's very brave <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry to say that Laura was not feeling so good uh, this morning, so I just step in in the last minute. I think that uh, Kate uh, trusted on my own experience as part of uh, Ganemos Madrid and then uh, Aura Madrid, and I've been also working as a strategy advisor to the city council in Madrid uh, since two months ago. So I'm going to try to outline some of what we could say the theory of the practice of the municipalism, uh, the, you know, how my, my experience uh, has gone. And uh, well, I'm uh, also, I was part of um, a group of militant research called the Observatorio Metropolitano. So for those of you who actually speak Spanish, there is a book called La Puesta Municipalista, where you could see a little bit uh, the principles that uh, actually uh, we try to summarize uh, some common sense that we thought was growing in Spain uh, on the light of the, uh, also the many limits that the uh, May 15th movement was uh, encountering. And this Apuesta Municipalista, the, the, the municipalist strategy or the municipalist uh, challenge uh, was based on the idea that the best way to actually try to implement a real democracy, as you might know, one of the groups that called for the May 15 demonstrations in, uh, in Spain were called Democracia Real Ya. So what, what if we are trying to achieve a real democracy? Uh, there was this idea of trying to make it from the institution that is closer to the people and the institution that is uh, closer to the to the citizens and then as I think also my uh, 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 comrades in the table will explain uh, the basis of these where we could in big lines could say that it's about 
uh, making an access to the resources of the territory, and this has to do with redistribution of, uh, of resources. It has to do also with uh, new kinds of economical models that are more in relation with the territories, and, uh, and also it has uh, to do with, uh, in principle, also thinking of uh, the what is available on there are many ways. There, there is not only uh, money, there is also like phys physical resources, access to physical resources, there is also the public services and the, the access to them and so on. Another line of action we could say it's about the opening of the institution. The institutions were seen as a castles, as a close structures that were impenetrable, and, and this has to do with the democratization of the institutions to create new ways that go beyond a mere participation into something that we could uh, define as a co-creation of decisions, but also co-creation of spaces, co-creation of institutions. And, uh, and a third line, which I think is also very important, is to understand uh, the local governments as enable uh, structures, as structures that not only have the capacity to develop their own action, but to be supportive, to make supporting uh, structures for, you know, like all the rest that was happening. Um, uh, famously, you know, Ada Colau hung uh, at the door of her office this uh, uh, notice saying, uh, we shouldn't forget who we are and where we come from. So the platforms that were developed in Spain came on this sense, a very strong sense of a confluence, the need to get together in order to tackle very big problems that are economical problems, of course, uh, in the middle of the austerity measures and the so-called crisis, but also social destructurization and political also crisis and uh, this distrust in the institutions that we all know. Um, so there, there is uh, a task to be able to support all these things, all these uh, processes and spaces some of us were uh, coming from. These, and uh, that, why I call it the theory of the practice is because, uh, of course, when then you get into uh, the government, and, and Beppe will know it as, uh, as much as uh, we do, it is very complicated. And it's complicated because we are struggling with different a structural, very, very deep structural situations. One is that the local governments, at least in Spain, I think some places is a little bit different, but basically it's mainly an administrative scale. It's not a legal uh, production uh, machine. It produces bylaws, it produces, uh, I don't know, uh, city council decrees. Uh, it produces a very specific kind of managing, which is actually the detail of the law, right? You have a uh, European directive that gets implemented in the different countries on uh, the national level. In Spain, it gets implemented in the regional uh, level, also in their own derivation of the national laws. But when it comes to the city councils, there is only one document that counts as law in Spain, and that's the master plan. The master plan counts as a law, and the rest is purely administrative. But as one say, the devil is in the details. And I, uh, in this point, remember always what uh, Raquel Gutierrez uh, was saying. I don't know if you know Raquel, she was in uh, Bolivia with Las Guerras uh, del Agua, she's from Mexico, and where her comrades actually got in the government in Bolivia and were doing a new constitution, asked her uh, to take a place in the government, and she said, okay, I want to deal with all these people that don't fit in the big picture. I, I want to deal with the administrative level. I want to go and open an office and listen to everybody that has this level. And something very interesting she said is like, they were in jail for political reasons. And then she said, when we were in jail, and I know and my comrades in the government know that you have to know the penal law, but actually your life depends on knowing the penal ordinances, how the, the details and the conditions that make these agents uh, able to access this resource that puts the condition to the social help actually is the difference between 
we are going to make a structure of the tax system that is going to benefit everybody and doing something that actually benefits everybody. And this depends on very specifications. This is complicated. Uh, we were talking uh, yesterday. We have great comrades that are uh, interested in constitutional law. We have great comrades that are uh, interested in penal law. And there are very few political point of view on administrative law. So there uh, we have to consider what is this tension between the codes that, that somehow order the social activity that produces the state and what we understand as municipalism and what is the different there. The other, um, uh, the other, I think that uh, complicated issue as well, as I said before, we shouldn't forget where we come from, but in general, the political arena has been very much built on this idea of the inside outside of the institutions and the different tensions. And I think that in, in, in classical political uh, politics, these relations were somehow clear and they were very often based on demands that uh, one, uh, let's say, constituency that felt related or, or felt like they had to actually uh, have a say on different governments could make demands and then the rest of the society tried to build a platforms that gather enough support so that uh, could make like a structure proposals that the government sh should take. But we see, uh, I think, in the local level now, I'm here talking from my experience, but it's difficult to make an analysis that is not a situated analysis, so bear with me, um, is that the more open and the more diverse that you have a government, the less clear that these uh, actually linear relations inside outside are. I mean, what we are seeing, at least in my experience, is that this classical demand and, and uh, let's say, uh, mm, provide of resources and spaces and political space or whatever has been the tension has been shifted from a uh, uh, clear inside outside attention to uh, inside outside 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 and inside inside this of course makes uh, things very interesting but as the chinese say may you live interesting times that's a little bit of a curse and and i think this is problematic because we haven't developed the tools to deal from the movement or from the institutions with this complexity. So uh, basically, I think that the situation with the municipalism is like we are proposing um, local institutions that are less attached to the state organization or the state-like organization. Can we imagine that the local governments are not, I would say not only, but not at all, maybe, the local branch of the state, but it's actually the place where this structure meets reality with all their complexities and actually is able to get all the paradoxes that we know that when these frames no, of the legal thing touches reality, it just doesn't fit because it's reality is much more complex, it's much more dynamic, it grows in another interest. This friction can be turned into a very creative force that makes the local governments something different and something that is, you know, as Raquel said, in, in the Spanish it says desflecar. I, I never understand, I, I never know how, you know, when, when you have like a cloth and, and there are uh, threads, no? C can we start to, to, you know, cut it and, and, and make the threads and open the structure of this very heavy uh, structure of the state? And I think that some of, of the characteristics that the local governments are challenging are first, the Leviathanism, not this idea that there is one elections and there is this multitude and then it comes 
you know, to the mayor, and then actually in Spain it's right like that. All the competences and all the power is in the mayor, and the mayor delegates by decrees to the different city councillors that actually delegate by decrees to the uh, general directors that somehow delegate functions to the sub general directors and then. Da -da -da -da. Um, but as Christopher Alexander said, the city is not a tree. And the city government shouldn't be a tree because this, the society is not made like that. Uh, what happens, this creates a very hierarchical uh, structure where you need signatures. You know, some people here can allow things up till 50,000 euros, and then some people here 100,000 euros, and then some people here 200,000 euros. But this also means what kind of decisions they can make. Um, but this also is very bi binary. That means in this kind of a structure, decisions are taken here or there. You either have 20 papers that allow you the access to this thing, or you don't have it. Either, you know, like it, it doesn't, it, uh, these are structures, usually we are faced with the structures that don't understand overlapping of things. And that is, is, is also a huge uh, problem. And it's also, another problem is the segmentation. The fact no, that should put reality with uh, uh, certain uh, taxonomies and, and actually, I recently learned that uh, very deep in the information system of the uh, city halls, there is something called information ontology. And that's amazing because it is, is the system, the names that the institution uses to name the world and, and is, is rooted and it links those conditions with uh, the decrees uh, in a way that is, it is very deep. So we are challenging at that. We, we used to say we, we are facing this machine. No? We, we enter, uh, again, in the case of Madrid, was, uh, uh, so that you have an idea, it was a machine that was designed by the uh, uh, Conservative uh, Party for the last 25 years with a very strong neoliberal turn 10 years ago. Um, and that machine has these tendencies. So what we are doing is we are little by little opening up spaces, making redistribution, you know, making supporting things so other things happen. And, and that is uh, a very, for me, this has to do with the plenary uh, uh, this morning. And that also has to do with this feminization of politics with understanding that your action, you know, and, and how you, you need and you ways, no? this, 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 these new elements in the fabric and then, and then you open it up. But there are also very big challenges that I think that the local governments are, uh, successfully have put. One is the challenge to the so-called crisis, the challenge to austerity. This is something that has been done in many different ways. Uh, because uh, austerity, uh, well, in Spain, the socialist uh, government changed an article in the constitution that said that you should pay the debt uh, to the banks as uh, your uh, main uh, uh, goal in the government. So that means that the uh, public expenditure is uh, capped. It has a cap and, um, and, well, many other things. But this is something that we are challenging. We, we are challenging the idea that there are no resources. There are enough resources for people to live a good life in our countries, in this country, in my city, Madrid. Uh, it's just that, you know, the distribution is not right. Um, the other thing is also very basic things that have to do with a good life. Uh, pollution and mobility, there is, uh, there is not by chance that there is a, a round table on mobility. It's a big issue and it challenges what does it mean? I mean, what is the important, um, inhabitant, I mean, who are we making the policies for? Are we making the policies for the people that are driving cars and polluting, or are we making the policies for child, elderly people, uh, and so on? Then there is the issue of the participation, which I think is a shift in the mentality and, uh, and 
I mean, my time is out, but I think it would be interesting to just put on the table a big challenge that we face that is in this country, the cultural world in all the different facets. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lots of ideas to get us started there. Ideas about um, the relationship between social movements and institutions, the relationship between the state and local government, different levels, um, the difference between theory and, and reality. So thank you very much. And now we'll um, move to Elisenda. Thank you. Good morning. Well, uh, when Kay told me that this workshop was municipalism for dummies, uh, honestly, I was a dummy. And I think that everyone um, doing municipalism have this feeling often, we are dummies. So the headline would be that there's no single formula uh, that works for every village or town. So we will throw ideas and our experience, but probably it won't work in your town or in your village. So you have to find your formula. That would be uh, the headline because when we were building, for example, our political party, we, were, we went around looking for ideas, how could we build an alternative to the government, but honestly, we had to build it ourselves because nothing works and only our experience, our knowledge on the ground uh, could make it possible. So that would be maybe the headline. Um, I will be focused more on the process. So um, what began in 2008 as a global financial recession soon became an institutional, democratic, and political crisis. So neoliberal offenses on common people increased, as you know, the distance between those who govern and those who were governed. And that led to moral deauthorization uh, of traditional elites, also because of corruption, as you know, uh, in Madrid, but also in Catalonia. We are not better than uh, in anywhere. So uh, this moral deauthorization of traditional elites, um, I think that first was towards representatives, but then it was towards the representation of democracy as a whole. In fact, because that democracy was maintaining the status quo. And that leads to the question of how we define democracy. And what we were living in 2008 was to confront, and that was enforced by the Indignados movement as well, Two signifiers. On the one hand, democracy as a form to elect national representatives. And on the other hand, democracy as the process of citizen empowerment based in participation. And in fact, for the philosophical founders, it has the second meaning. In fact, Rousseau used the expression of the general will. So if democracy was thought for reducing the gap between social vindications and political decisions, uh, this need became more crucial, especially in a world with multinational, supranational institutions like the European Union or delocalization as well. So when the power lives in the abstract, municipalism is where we put faces and names to things and that for us became crucial because we gained confidence and we gave hope against uncertainty. And I think that feeling was also was farther than a political um, thing. But what is municipalism? Well, I think there is the general sense and then the restricted sense and then our sense. The general sense says that is all actions, analyses, strategies between local government and social movement with interventions like the protest, right to demand information, collaboration in any participatory process, or the relation with elected and traditional local parties. 
Then we have the restricted sense, the articulation of different social movements with the aim to obtain representation. And our sense is our, I mean, well, as I understand, to build a community. Okay? So to give collective meaning to demands too often felt in isolation. And not only to give collective um, meaning to demands, but to respond not only from the local government, but also from every social movement on the ground. But what do we need to build this community? How we build this sense? Well, I wrote three things. I think we need techne, I mean competence, autonomy, and coordination. So I think these three things um, may work. Competence. I think to go farther than ideological rhetorics and to move from technocracy to practical applications, we need technical competence to share with civil servants, but also to lead the political agenda. Autonomy. With the emergence of local campaigns in Catalonia, a new axis, not the national, as you may know, with an independence movement, not the social, but the participatory appeared. So a new axis of radicalization, not only uh, in forms, but in content, appeared uh, at that time. An indignados movement gave force to that idea with radical ways of expressing it as well. So local campaigns faced also pragmatical and tactical voters. But, and I think that more than ideological and organic voters. And uh, at the third place, coordination. If municipalist movements do not have a social base, they will easily become one party more. And it is as important to be in decision-making spaces as maintaining the social pressure that created them. For this, I think that we should escape easy options, uh, copying culture or other political structure. I think that um, she was explaining all of that about the structure. And we need more network, as today we are doing this, more network, and more than working as homogeneous policies going around the globe. In fact, it's to name um, different, uh, but doing the same. That's why we have Barcelona en Comú, we have Guanyem Badalona, we have Dacidim Ripollet, but it's the same alternative municipalism. So different names, but related to the same thing. So that's why we didn't say we were fighting against capitalism. We didn't say we were fighting against imperialism or the patriarchal state, but in fact, we were doing that. And how we did it? Well, how we fought against the global abstract with local concrete policies. In 2007, we created L'Altra Veu, which means the other voice, okay? It's a political party, and we name it L'Altra Veu, the other voice, which would run municipal elections, obtaining two councillors and becoming the key to direct progress in my village, Castellà del Vallès. L'Altra Veu was created in reaction of fascist aggressions. We were living in our village, but then we understood that our reaction uh, was responding farther than, than this. So it was summing up different policies that weren't taking place. The campaign, our campaign, integrated people from different social movements, people from different ages and identities. We didn't belong to any ism, and we didn't want to belong to any ism because we didn't need to. Patience, everyone can teach and contribute with knowledge and experience from outside institutional representation, and of course, company, because Altraveu was part of a wider new 
municipalist movement in, el, in Vallès, our region, called Candidatures Alternatives del Vallès, CAP. Okay? CAP is the, the shorter name. CAP were formalized, in fact, before election of 2007, but at that time, of the 100 candidacies, half obtained representation, half. People in this CAP, in this new municipalist movement, show difference, differences with some left-wing parties. Less partidist character, so people from some left-wing parties, but many, many autonomous. Politics of proximity and intuitive approach to popular unity. In fact, we, well, we think that we anticipated Indignados movement and materialized wishes which became majoritarian on May 2011 with Indignados. Uh, in conclusion, uh, in some small and average cities by that time, it was possible to create alternative and popular candidacies, but in big cities like Barcelona, the municipalist initiatives had coordinated through neighborhood movements and other social organizations. Probably the most important thing as a conclusion, the new municipalism become, became the laboratory of change as a space of political innovation in front of a full context of uncertainties and new challenges. And here also it is important the indignation and big mobilization that supposed Indignados movement, which shed new light to the social, political, national, and economic conflicts. As a result, change does not only take place in Catalonia, sometimes we tend to think that change only happens here, but also within the state, and renders visible the collapse of the political system that had operated since the transition. Keeping the citizen leadership, it is crucial. The construction of wide coalitions which sum or multiply, this is the example of Barcelona and Comú, but also our Altra Veu, our political party that we build in Castellà, became another thing, became Decidim Castellà when it integrated other forces in it. So then we obtain four councillors, so we multiply our force. So in fact, when Indignados movement appeared, crystallized with the experience of that alternative municipalism, which was already there. And I think that both initiatives made a great contribution in order to go from the resistance to rule, to govern cities. And I'm finishing that there is a saying in Catalan written by Joan Fuste, and I think that it's good to keep it in mind, and especially today. And it says, if we don't do politics, politics will be made against us. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> no, just to say, I think with the first two uh, in interventions, when we're thinking about the debate later about the opportunities and limits of municipalism, it's important to always be comparing with the alternative, which is usually a state-based or a national-based approach. So these issues of scale, of the powers of the institution, of the resources of the institution, of um, the relationship of the institution with citizens, of the capacity to bring together diverse alliances and to think about how that works at national level or at state level and how that works at local level and the, the kind of trade-offs between the two. So that's something that I think we should keep in mind as we listen to Bebe. Thank you, uh, thank you, Kate, uh, and uh, good morning to, ev to everybody. Uh, I think that uh, here there are very few dummies but most are uh, activists, uh, elected people that are uh, already doing uh, municipalist practices uh, uh, on uh, her or his uh, local level. 
and uh, interested in this discussion uh, about uh, limits, contradiction, but also further potentialities of uh, uh, their municipalist experience. Um, I will try uh, as introductory brief remarks uh, uh, to uh, discuss uh, some points uh, about uh, municipalism as uh, a political culture. Of course, not an ideology. Of course, I think uh, that uh, everybody in this room uh, will share the idea that uh, we don't need a new uh, ideological icon. We don't need uh, a new ideological discourse, but we need to connect uh, a plurality of political cultures uh, with uh, our daily practices uh, in a common strategic framework. Considering uh, one very important point uh, that uh, uh, Elisenda already stressed, uh, that is uh, the fact uh, that we cannot uh, even discuss uh, of uh, models when we discuss uh, the practices. We have to discuss uh, single examples, uh, no? like uh, uh, in the Spinoza's uh, ethics, uh, there is the example, no? uh, trying uh, to, uh, to fill up uh, the discourse. Well, about municipalism as political culture, we have to highlight the fact uh, that uh, municipalist political culture was uh, every time a minoritarian one. It was uh, an heretic political culture, even uh, in uh, progressive and left-oriented uh, cultures. Uh, look, for example, uh, at the uh, workers' uh, movement uh, and its unions, uh, its parties uh, in the 19th and 20th century. The political culture of workers' movement in the past two centuries was every time a state-centered culture. Uh, and sometimes uh, uh, with, with a kind of uh, idolatry of the state. There were some good reasons for that. For example, the fact uh, that uh, uh, in the past two centuries, the state uh, was uh, the driving force uh, of capitalist uh, development uh, and in the same time the possible regulator of uh, wealth uh, redistribution and uh, uh, the possible regulator of social uh, protection. But even, not only in socialist and communist cultures, but even in anarchist culture, there was uh, this uh, uh, majoritarian idea of uh, uh, a central role of the nation state, even when the idea was uh, to, to conquer or to destroy that, uh, that state. So we have uh, to enter in a kind of real tunnel history of municipalism as political culture. Uh, with an important point, uh, uh, the municipalist culture emerged and re-emerges again and again in transition times. It means uh, in that times uh, that uh, we can call uh, following uh, the Gramsci's uh, definition time of uh, interregnum. So the times uh, when uh, the old is dying and with all the, I mean, uh, the old power structures, the old leaderships, the old uh, economic and social models and so on. But in this time of interregnum, the new, it means the new social forces, uh, new social economic uh, model of common life uh, are hard to affirm 
uh, to affirm uh, them, uh, themselves. These times of transition, we know, these times uh, of interregnum are uh, uh, dangerous times as the ones we are living in. At the times of monsters, uh, it means when the resistance uh, of the old, the resistance of the old create uh, reactionary answers in terms of nationalism, in terms of protectionism, in terms of uh, isolationism, uh, in terms of authoritarian responses. But we have to focus uh, on the fact that, that uh, municipalist political culture is a crucial resource in this time of transition. It's a crucial resource uh, when new social forces are emerging and new social forces uh, are looking for tools, uh, are looking for weapons, uh, theoretical and practical weapons, uh, to uh, define uh, possible uh, new way of uh, uh, radical uh, structural social transformation. Second point uh, to outline uh, this uh, original heretic political culture is to highlight uh, uh, the historical role of uh, cities uh, in the European history. I will be very, very brief on that. Uh, if you read some pages uh, of uh, uh, Ferdinand Brodel uh, looking at the end of the Middle Age in the Mediterranean area, there is a, a, a definition of cities as uh, uh, fixed points on the maps, but in the same time uh, something in in a permanent move, in permanent uh, movement, no? So, cities uh, as uh, important hubs uh, of uh, commercial trade relations uh, uh, at that time, uh, the end of the, of the Middle Age and not poor cause uh, as uh, space also of political innovation, of communal experience of self-government uh, against the empire, became uh, the crucial place uh, where uh, was uh, possible uh, the liberation from uh, servile constraints, uh, possible space of liberation from uh, servitude. And, uh, there was a, a very similar way of saying at that time uh, in all the European language uh, of the Middle Age, uh, the hair of the city makes uh, you free, testifying uh, this uh, historical, the historical role uh, even uh, in uh, affirming uh, a complete, uh, diverse uh, model of uh, sovereignty in a double conflict uh, with the empire and with the feudal with the feudal powers we can uh, sometimes retrieve uh, this role also in the contemporary uh, profound uh, transformation of the productive uh, and social reproductive role of cities uh, in uh, uh, current uh, global markets and capitalist uh, financialized economy. Cities are in the same times uh, the place uh, where uh, the most advanced forms of uh, organization of labor, the most advanced forms of uh, uh, production are taking place, are the room where uh, the extractive the expossessionist logic of contemporary financial capitalism is taking place. Uh, the, the parasitic attitude uh, to grasp uh, the socially uh, produced wealth and in the same time uh, to appropriate uh, which are the material and immaterial commons 
produced by uh, the form of collective life in cities uh, are the crucial task of a uh, uh, financialized economy, but in the same time cities are the place uh, where the most uh, lively forms of self-organization, of cooperation, of independent uh, uh, creative uh, production are taking place. This is the reason why in the last cycle of social movement, uh, cities were the place where uh, uh, these movements, uh, this uh, urban, uh, huge social movement, protest, uh, moment of self-organization uh, uh, had, uh, had uh, uh, took place. Fourth, we have to consider, but I will be very, very fast on that uh, to, to go to my first conclusions, uh, on the impact of austerity policies uh, on cities, uh, and not only on, uh, on city governments, uh, on the whole urban social fabric, in the, in the whole urban uh, uh, social context, uh, in the past uh, uh, 10 years. This fourth element uh, were combined uh, in uh, municipalist experience uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with a crucial point. Uh, that is uh, the structural crisis of political representation. Often uh, we describe also to ourselves uh, uh, the crisis uh, of uh, ruling uh, elites uh, at something related uh, with uh, corruption, uh, it's, uh, it's clearly sure, mm. as something related uh, to their inability to effectively represent uh, uh, which are uh, the new uh, subjective mm. social forces uh, and so on, uh, the attitude uh, to protect uh, uh, the economic uh, and power I interest uh, of a very few uh, social minority. I think that uh, in the crisis of uh, political representation, uh, there is uh, something deeper. There is something more structural. There is something that uh, has to do with uh, the transformation of economy and society, with the transformation of the role of state uh, itself, uh, there is something that is, uh, uh, rightly, Elisenda uh, highlighted uh, uh, the role of supranational powers, of supranational institution. But the political representation, the logic of political representation was challenged uh, in the past decade, uh, uh, mostly from below, mm. mostly by the attitude of developing uh, new forms of self, social self-organization, new forms of social autonomy. Uh, this is the reason why uh, I think that uh, uh, the new municipalist experience, and I, in this case I, I stressed uh, the new, uh, because we had you know, this uh, long time political culture, we had uh, an interesting wave uh, of municipalist experiences uh, during the end of the 90s, beginning of the 2000s, uh, in, in the framework of uh, uh, the global uh, social movements. Uh, and I think that everybody here uh, knows uh, the Latin American and some European experiences of that time, uh, focused in that case mainly on the issues of uh, participatory democracy and participatory budgeting. I think that uh, in this moment and the new municipalist experiences, uh, and this is one of the points we, we can discuss uh, later, uh, participation is uh, a real empty significance. Mm. Uh, and has more to do with uh, the techniques of building consensus uh, and less uh, with uh, real uh, democratic process uh, from uh, below. But new municipalism, uh, this is my thesis, has much to do with uh, a demand of uh, 
alternative governing than uh, on demand of new political representation. The reason why uh, citizen platforms all around uh, the uh, Spanish state uh, and other similar experience uh, are winning elections on local level is because uh, after the new cycle of social movement, there is a demand not to be representative uh, by somebody else. Uh, of course, much better than the, the old political class, uh, the old uh, ruling political leadership, but it's a demand to have uh, a different way of governing our towns, our villages, our cities. So my conclusion is uh, about uh, the ingredients uh, of, uh, of these uh, municipalist practices. Maybe we are inspired by, by being uh, in, uh, in this uh, capella, by this in this. So uh, we have also a religious, a religious inspiration. But I think that uh, what is crucial, and also crucial to discuss limits and contradiction later, is uh, uh, to establish uh, municipalistic uh, practices uh, on a holy trinity, the, the, a, tri a real trinitarian uh, uh, approach. This holy trinity is about uh, subjective forces uh, of any municipalist practices. This holy trinity is on one hand, uh, first of all, social dynamics. We need strong social dynamics from below. I use social dynamics and not uh, the level of social movements uh, to have a, a wider category to uh, interpret it and to, to rework. Uh, uh, social movements uh, uh, seems to be sometimes uh, too narrow. Uh, when we are building uh, uh, municipal experience, we have to do with a multiplicity of uh, uh, social subject, of social, su uh, of social forces uh, that are uh, uh, deploying in, uh, in cities. The second element of the Holy Trinity is uh, the ability to build uh, uh, new uh, confluences, new political platforms that are not the same thing of social movement, are not the same thing of social, uh, uh, social dynamics. Uh, is uh, the attempt uh, to, to assume the claims, the demands of social dynamics and to translate it uh, in a political project. Third, are, uh, the third uh, part of the Holy Trinity are the city institutions. It's clear that uh, uh, the different combination of these uh, social dynamics, political platform, city institutions uh, will uh, describe uh, the different uh, uh, level of uh, municipal practice, uh, but uh, if we miss uh, any of these components, any of these uh, real actors in municipalist di uh, dynamics, in municipalist practices, uh, the risk is uh, uh, to lose uh, uh, the permanent ability to renovate uh, itself uh, that is crucial in any municipalist experience. That's all for the moment, and then we will discuss uh, all together. Thank you, Beppe. Um, I think it's, it's interesting that um, you think that none of us are dummies and Elisenda thinks we're all dummies. And I think, <laughs> in a way... Yeah, you're both right. Because, I mean, we're all dummies because um, municipalism is this idea that, you know, any normal person can make decisions about the things that affect them in their daily life and you don't have to be a, an expert, right? Um, but at the same time, we're all not dummies because I think probably at this summit we have the people who know most about municipalism in the world all together. Um, however little we feel like we might know, I think actually we probably are 
as close as it gets to the experts, which is a bit scary, but uh, here we are. Um, so I think just a couple of other elements to add to the debate. Um, one is what we talked about in the plenary. I don't know how, how many of you were in the plenary, but it was about the feminization of politics. And I think thinking about municipalism from a gender perspective is also an interesting exercise because I think it potentially has more potential to break down patriarchal structures than national politics. And another of the themes of this summit, which will be coming up in a lot of the sessions, is the issue of the rise of the far right, authoritarianism, racism, xenophobia. And I think thinking about municipalism uh, from that point of view, um, not talking about the nation or the nation state and the kind of identities, political identities, collective identities that can be created at a city level or a municipal le level um, as opposed to a national level is also an interesting thing to bear in mind. Um, so now I think I'm really excited about this because we've now almost had um, two hours, three hours of conference and um, we haven't done any participation, which is terrible. So now is the time. Um, I'm gonna put you into four groups. I think it will be interesting apart from the debate that we each group starts with um, a round of, of introductions where everyone can say where they're from, uh, what organization or movement they're a part of, um, so that we can start to all get to know each other because after this session there's coffee. So that is really the most important moment and we can start the coffee chat, uh, you know, now, why not? Um, and then I think we can have maybe let's say 20 minutes, half an hour, um, to talk about the advantages, opportunities, um, value, uh, added value of municipalism, and also the limits of the strategy and the risks of the strategy maybe um, in each group. And if also, I think hopefully we can have one of each of us in each group, um, to help and in each group we'll choose somebody hopefully or someone will volunteer to then um, share some of the ideas from each group um, at the end of the session and then we'll have coffee so um, if I put you by rows I'll say one two three four and then we'll have one group one there group two there group three here group four there uh, we can move the chairs a bit and go into circles, um, as, but we'll have to put them back afterwards. So, stay where you are, stay where you are. <laughs> okay, okay.